My birthday is tomorrow. So I got a fresh new do. Turning 32. All right, back to business. Hey guys, welcome back to Susan Sunday Spotlight. I am Susan Jones and I have a new game for you this week and it is all about money. So in first grade, I'm usually teaching students, you know, each of the coin denominations. I'm teaching them how to exchange coins and how to hold like the least amount of coins for that value. Um, and so this game is a fun one and it is called Pop the Piggy. Everything I'm going to show you in this game is going to be listed for free in my TPT store. I made like all the little graphic organizers in a little unit called Pop the Piggy, which is the name of the game. And it's Pop the Piggy like a piggy bank. So all you'll need from your classroom are like these little plastic coins, which I'm sure you have a ton of in your classroom, and some dice. That's all you'll need for this game. And if you would like to use the little pigs that I have, like I said, I listed them below that you can print them out for free to grab those. So here's how you play Pop the Piggy. This game can be done whole group first, which is what I like to do. And so I will always like take one of my little piggy banks here and I will put just some magnets on the back and I'll put it up on the board with a bunch of magnetic coins so students can see how to play this game. And then it's played the same exact way um, whole group as it is with partners, except with partners they're seeing which student is going to pop their own piggy bank first. When whole group, since we're all playing together, they're seeing which student's roll of the dice is going to pop the piggy. When we're playing whole group, I will always start. So I'll usually take a big dice since we're playing whole group, and I'll go ahead and roll the dice. Two. If I get a two, that just means I am adding two pennies to the piggy bank. So I'll take one and two. Add them right to the bank. Now this piggy here, I have pops at one dollar. I have them for fifty cents, seventy-five cents, a dollar, and I also have a blank one where you could write any amount that this piggy pops at, so you can make it a little differentiated for them. I'd usually have my students sitting in a circle for this, so I'd pass my dice to the first student, and they would go ahead and roll the dice in front of everyone. Four. They would go ahead and add four pennies. One, two, three, four. Now, before they go ahead and pass the dice, I am always checking to see if they can do any exchanges for a higher denomination. Just like when we're doing place value and I want them to always exchange 10 ones for a tens rod, I'm trying to see if they can realize that there are um, easier ways to carry less change in this piggy bank. So I would have students look around and they would notice that one, two, three, four, five pennies is the same as a nickel. So I'd actually have that student who just rolled the four come back up, take these four pennies, or sorry, five pennies, well, take these five pennies out and replace it with a nickel. And we would notice that we still have six cents in there and then they would go ahead and pass the dice around the circle. Now I would have that student pass the dice along and when we're playing whole group, we're trying to see which student's roll of the dice is going to pop the piggy bank. Once it reaches one dollar, the piggy bank has popped and it can no longer hold any more change. To make this game go along a little faster, you can always use two dice instead, so they are adding anywhere from two to twelve cents at a time. Now, once students understand how to play this game, I go ahead and tell them that they can play with partners. And with partners, like I said, they are trying to be the first to pop their piggy. So they would each choose the same piggy sheet. This one's blank, so like I said, you could write whatever you wanted here. They would each choose their own piggy sheet, and they would have a big pile of coins to pick from. And now they would just take turns rolling the dice and adding that change to their piggy bank to see who pops their pig first. Students love playing this game because it's like a little race for them. And like I said, it's a great way to review all the different values of coins and their different denominations and holding the least amount of coins with the same value. Now for a little accountability when students are done, once one of the students has popped the pig, I have two different recording sheets that they can go ahead and fill out. One says, I popped the piggy. And it says, here are the coins I had in my piggy bank. And so the student would write their name on the bottom and they would go ahead and draw the coins that they had or write the dollar amounts of their total, just so I can check in. And the other students whose piggy bank didn't pop, they would do the I didn't pop the piggy. And they would also write theirs down here below. Just as a way to, for me to check in if I didn't get to reach every group while they were playing this game, I could just make sure that they're understanding um, and adding up the coins, right? Also, often people will ask me where I get the materials that I've used in these videos. I will almost always have them all linked below. So like these plastic coins, or like the little magnet tape, the board, anything that's in this video you can probably find linked below just for future reference and in my other videos as well. If you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know this is what you want more of. And go ahead and leave me a comment below letting me know if you've tried this in your classroom. As always, make sure you are subscribed to Susan Jones Teaching and hit the bell. That way you're notified of every single new video. See you next week.
Bye. Do 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 do. Wah wah. Do 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 do. Yee haw.